Let's turn that corner pantry into a beautiful butler style pantry. Let's install and finish your base cabinet frame. We finished building our base cabinet frame and installing the shelves. Now it's time to install our base cabinet into the pantry and do all of our finishings. If you still don't have a plan, please don't worry. Just check out our planning guide here to find out how. The link to our free cut list and rip list is in the description below. Let's start installing your base cabinet frame. Here's a list of all the tools that you'll need in order to install the base cabinet frames yourself. Once you bring both your base cabinets into your corner pantry, you're going to need to push them up against the wall as best that you can and recognize that most walls won't be straight. So we're going to have to adjust to that by ensuring the base cabinets are square to one another. So we do this by adding a square on one side and a straight edge on the other, butting them against one another and making sure that the two cabinets are square to one another. So this way we don't worry about the fact that the walls are not straight. Our cabinets will be perfectly square. Now, if you did not remove the baseboards like we did not, then you just need to now accurately measure the gap between the back cross rail and the wall in at least two points. Then we're going to cut shims at exactly that thickness and place them between the cabinet and the wall. You want to make sure to check where the studs are and place the shim over top of at least one stud. Then just go ahead, pre-drill a hole, and then secure it with some screws. Simply repeat on the other base cabinet frame and your cabinets are secure. Now it's time to build and install our finishing pieces. Here's a list of all the tools that you'll need in order to do this. A free cut and rip list for these finishing pieces is also available at TamericMeCrazy.com. You can find the link in the description below. You'll notice that the fronts of your base cabinet frame are not very pretty looking. They're very rough. So we need to make some finishing pieces so that they look very nice and smooth. So you can either leave it as wood or paint them. So we took some two millimeter thick maple veneer and we cut them into strips. And don't worry, all of the sizing is listed at TamericMeCrazy.com in our free cut and rip list. Using calipers is a great way to ensure the right sizing with small pieces like this. So then just dry fit, make sure it's the right size, put some wood glue on one side, and then line it up as perfectly as you can. You can secure them with clamps on both sides and this really helps. Another tip is to use a straight edge or one of your cut pieces and hold it against the side to make sure that it's lined up perfectly. Then just simply brad nail it on and repeat the process with all four pieces. It's quite simple and easy to do and it will make the edges nice and smooth and finished. These are the finishing pieces for the box where your drawers will be. You'll need of course to do both sides, the left and the right base cabinet frames if you're doing a corner pantry like we are. So now we can build the finishing pieces in order to bridge the gap between the two base cabinets. And we already know the width of this gap, which is the measurement H, and that was the gap needed for our drawer clearance. Using our design, there's a little bit of lost space. However, there's a huge increase in functionality because we can maximize the size of our drawers. As you can see here, we just used enough clearance to be able to clear the drawers and the handles from one another. If you don't want to have large drawers this way, then of course your design would reflect that. So now we're going to have to cut some finishing pieces for this corner. So we know the measurements from our plan before is Q by H. And from this visual here, you can see looking above what we're going to be doing for a layout. We're going to use two pieces of two by four, which will create strength just in case you kick the corner. It gives it much more stability. And remember again, these are all in our cut and rip list, all of the measurements. And then we're going to cut our three quarter inch plywood, which will be the finishing piece on front. And we'll line up the front of the finishing piece with the front of the thin veneer finishing piece that we've already placed on the box for our drawers. Then we'll place the two by four wood block behind it and secure it to the base cabinet with screws. Adding these two by fours gives a lot of strength to the corner. So you never have to worry about anyone kicking it. Then simply brad nail the front to the two by fours and you're ready to go. Next, we're going to add the kick plate finishing piece. 
So this cover will be the width W plus the width H. So we're going to use one quarter inch plywood here because it's going to be butt up against our stable front cross rails. So we don't have to worry about it bending at all. Getting this kick plate cover in can be tricky though. So angling the kick plate cover slightly forward will help you to slide it in and then it'll fit perfectly. Then just simply brad nail it in, making sure it's pressed really securely and tightly up against that front cross rail. Next, we're going to add the shelving finishing pieces. And for this one, we bumped it out slightly to match up with the drawer front. So the drawer and the shelf box are flush. So the first piece we're going to look at is just to the left of the drawers. The depth of this piece is the thickness of the drawer front plus two millimeters because you've already added the wood veneer finishing piece and the drawer will sit in front of that. The next piece is the piece that sits right up against the wall and for this piece you're going to have the same height which is our height T plus 1.5 inches because of the 3 quarter inches on the top and the bottom. The same thickness as we discussed and if you kept your baseboards on you're going to have to do a small cutout for your baseboard which is fairly simple. And the width of this piece is the width J plus the thickness of the baseboard. Depending on how many shelves you've decided to make, you'll definitely need a top and bottom finishing piece and perhaps a finishing piece for each shelf. The bottom finishing piece is double the thickness of the others as it includes the base shelf and the bottom rail thickness. We used some extra maple we had laying around and then what we decided to do is use dowels, drill a hole and secure the big pieces with dowels. The other pieces we used the brad nails, so it's up to you how you want to secure them, but definitely use wood glue in combination with the brad nails or the dowels. The final finishing step is the caulking, sanding and painting if you choose to do so. If you're going to be painting like we are, then you don't need to be perfect here. You just need to take off the sharp edges and make it look nice and finished and smooth, especially where the dowels are. In order to get a very beautiful finished look, you want to make sure that you caulk every single joint and we use the Alex Plus. It's a great caulking and if you aren't sure how to do caulking, then just go ahead and check out our video here that's going to show you how. And just paint if desired using a small brush and roller and that's it. You're done. You're ready to now build and install your countertop. So coming up next, we'll show you how we built, installed and finished our beautiful wooden countertop. I'll see you then. I'd like to acknowledge the amazing help from my father-in-law Brent. Please like and subscribe to our channel to find out when our next video comes out.